It's a rare chronic disorder characterized by copper accumulation in organs and tissues that if left untreated may result in liver, neurologic and psychiatric symptoms that progress over time. Wow. Well, today, let's hear from two specialists who each play key roles in the diagnosis of and management of this disease. But first, let's meet Ed, who waited almost 50 years to get diagnosed. Let's go behind the mystery of Wilson disease. I grew up in Tampa, Florida and went to high school there and went to college there. I moved to Marietta. I raised a family, I have three kids, been financing most of my life. When I was in my late teens, I started to experience uh, severe muscle spasms, wake up in the morning and they would start progressing during the day. I noticed a, a lot of uneasiness, came to a crescendo probably between high school and college. And specifically when the phone would ring and that first ring, I'd just kind of jump out of my skin. And I thought, well, there's something wrong here. First thing I did, I went to the, the uh, college doctor and, and he said, well, I just think you're just, it's college pressure. And then I started having gastro issues, went to the gastro doctor, and he said, well, uh, sounds like you may, rather than nervousness, you may have anxiety. And that kind of started the ball rolling to, to get more and more down the road towards, you have some uh, psychological issues, and maybe some neurological issues. I was raising a family and I just I, uh, just coped with it as best I could. The Balancing Act traveled to New Haven, Connecticut to meet with Dr. Michael Shilsky, Medical Director of Adult Liver Transplant at Yale New Haven Transplantation Center, who has 40 years of experience managing Wilson disease patients. Wilson disease is an inherited disorder of copper metabolism that is due to a defect in a gene known as ATP7B. When this gene is defective, copper accumulates in the liver and then other organs, such as the central nervous system, the cornea and other places in the body. The accumulation of copper over time causes liver disease, neurologic and or psychiatric symptoms. In untreated Wilson disease, patients experience progressive advanced liver disease, which can lead to liver failure and death. The majority of Wilson disease patients experience symptoms between ages 5 to 35. However, there have been patients diagnosed in their 70s and 80s. In the beginning when patients may or may not have symptoms of their disease, you can detect the disease by elevations of liver tests that can be found on a blood test. And this may indicate inflammation or hepatitis of the liver. This inflammation leads to more advanced scarring and eventually to cirrhosis and eventually liver failure. Due to the inflammation in the liver, uh, vague signs of liver injury, which often include fatigue, jaundice, portal hypertension, which is an increase in pressure caused by the resistance of the liver to blood flow through it. This can cause accumulation of fluid in the abdomen, there may also be anemia. An enlarged spleen may also occur in patients with this portal hypertension. We also met with Dr. Amar Patel, Assistant Professor of Neurology at Yale Medicine, to understand the neurologic and or psychiatric symptoms patients may experience. In Wilson's disease, the abnormal accumulation of copper in the brain causes damage and directly leads to the neurological, psychiatric, and behavioral effects of the disease. The neurological symptoms of Wilson's disease typically occur later in onset than those with liver symptoms, on average around the age of 30. Neurological symptoms include movement disorders such as tremor or involuntary movements, drooling, slurred speech, migraine headaches, insomnia, and seizures. The psychiatric symptoms of Wilson's disease can include anxiety, depression, personality changes, neurotic behaviors, and even psychosis. The neurological and psychiatric symptoms of Wilson's disease can affect patients' mobility and their mood and how they think, so it can certainly affect their quality of life in day-to-day -day activities. Patients often have to see a number of specialists before they reach a diagnosis, and this can be very challenging for them as early intervention is key to the management of the condition. Well, as I got older, I started having concentration issues, impulsiveness. I lived in 15 houses in 21 years. When you're trying to raise a family and you're moving a lot, that just put stress on top of stress and made the anxiety worse. It became harder and harder to sleep, and that's why I started seeing a lot of doctors. And uh, I would go from one to the other, and 
get the same result, we, we don't know what's wrong. When I started having walking issues and tripping in the, sometimes in a crowded area, it became very embarrassing at times. Now, muscle spasms uh, continued, moved up to the shoulders, just kind of, I just kind of managed it from there through different therapies. I saw several doctors, I saw gastroenterologists, I saw neurologists, I saw chiropractors, uh, I saw uh, orthopedic. What they were doing is treating symptoms. I just kept thinking, something's wrong, this isn't normal. I just wondered what was wrong with me. Wilson disease affects approximately one in 30,000 to one in 67,000 people worldwide. A close friend of mine recommended that I go to a renowned clinic to find the cause of all my symptoms. The main takeaway from my visit to that clinic was that my blood copper was low. I wanted a second opinion, so I went to see an endocrinologist. The endocrinologist thought that my copper level would in, may indicate Wilson's disease. After the 24-hour urine test and the blood test, it was recommended that I get a liver biopsy. The liver biopsy revealed that I had 33 times normal copper in my liver. The doctor recommended I have the genetics test to, to see if I had the mutation of the gene that causes Wilson's. That was the first time that it had been confirmed that I had Wilson's. I was relieved to say I finally have a name for this. The American Association for the Study of Liver Diseases, co-authored with Dr. Shilsky, is one journal that summarizes the guidelines for diagnosing Wilson disease. To determine if a patient has Wilson disease, we look for both certain physical signs and biochemical tests that allow us to establish the diagnosis. These include blood tests, which may indicate development of more advanced liver disease, blood tests that may look at proteins such as ceruloplasmin, which is a copper protein, Kaiser Fleischer ring, which can be seen by an ophthalmologist, on slit lamp examination, urine copper excretion over a 24-hour period. In some patients, measurement of the copper alone in the circulation may be difficult to interpret and cannot be used as a diagnostic test by itself. A liver biopsy can also aid in the diagnosis of Wilson disease, both by the pattern of injury to the liver as well as measuring the liver content of copper. The ability to do genetic testing for Wilson disease has aided in diagnosis, but it does have its limitations. Testing is not always available worldwide. Genetic testing has been extremely useful to help screen the family. Diagnosing Wilson's disease may be very challenging because physicians may not encounter this rare condition and need to be trained to recognize the rare or atypical features of the condition that can lead to a diagnosis. Patients with unexplained liver disease and neurological or psychiatric disorders should be screened for the possibility of Wilson's disease. With respect to diagnosis and management, we still have unmet needs for this patient population. Once Wilson disease is diagnosed, it requires a lifetime of medical therapy. Liver transplantation for Wilson disease is reserved for patients with advanced liver failure. The current needs for Wilson disease are more treatment options that may be safe and effective, well tolerated and potentially help mitigate the risk of uncontrolled symptoms. For a newly diagnosed Wilson's disease patient, I think it's important to know that there is hope. There are a large community out there of physicians and patients who are advocating on their behalf. After I was diagnosed, I wanted to search for a great care team of specialists that could help me with the Wilson's disease. And that created a great support group and found out that there were many people suffering a lot more than me. It's worth it to say, hey, you got through it all. Somehow, you're here. And, you know, that's satisfying. For more information on Wilson disease, you can visit wilsondisease.org, liverfoundation.org, and rarediseases.org. And of course, you can always go over to our website, thebouncingact.com. We'll be back right after this.